disrupt, right? That's right. Tell the viewers what TC Disrupt is. Well, this is a conference for like innovators and startup people and creatives and technologists, engineers, all to come together and just like come up with awesome ideas and just pitch them and just try all sorts of different stuff and just see what sticks. And you, your big idea is American manufacturing. I'm really into making and manufacturing, that's right. Give me the 30 second elevator pitch for Adafruit. Okay, you got it. Uh, so I'm the lead engineer and owner of Adafruit Industries and we're an open source hardware company and we have a factory here in Manhattan. So we actually do manufacturing in Soho, sort of downtown from here. We have 40,000 square feet and I do electronic manufacturing. So some of the stuff I make is like wearable computers that you can sew onto clothing and make your own like shoes that react when you dance or a prom dress that twinkles when the music comes on. And What does that do? This is, this is the Flores. This is a, a wearable computer and it's actually got snaps on it. You can snap it in to your clothing and actually with this the goal of this project is, is to get young people, young girls, young boys interested in wearable electronics. So instead of just buying an Apple Watch, it's just cool, you have an Apple Watch, no judging, but like, <laughs> let's say you want to build your own technology, you want to learn what, how, and why you would make this kind of technology. This is meant to be very simple and easy. All you need is a needle and some conductive thread, and you can build your own like high-tech electronics at home. You love what you're doing. I do. Do you love what you're doing? I love what I'm doing. Awesome. And I feel so lucky for it. Yeah. All right. And there's so many people out there who, they, they don't necessarily love what they're doing, but one of the big pushes is to get more young women to love this, to love what you're doing. They should, it's great. What's the sales pitch to them? Well, first off, you know, young girls and, and young boys, everybody, like I said, they love to be creative. They love to build stuff. They love to make art. They love to skateboard. They love to make music. and so. Technology comes in and, and can help you with that. So you know, like you know, when you and I maybe were in high school, like you'd have a band, and now you have a garage band, right? So just like a software is helping people with stuff, like I see kids who want to do fashion, but now they can add electronics to their fashion. And I also see a lot of kids who do skateboarding, and now they're adding like LEDs and sensors to the skateboard so they can map and track how well they do their tricks. So like it's so neat that all the stuff that kids love to do already, they can now look at electronics and integrate this new tech form into what they're doing already. What's the first thing someone who's watching this interview who sees you and says, she's pretty cool, I want to do what she's doing, what's the first thing they should do to position themselves for that? Well, especially if you're an adult and you have kids, you should pick up something like an Arduino starter pack or a Flora starter pack, sort of like a $50 bundle of parts, um, and put it together and follow the like projects and then think about like, okay, I learned how to blink an LED. What can I do with that to like make it more fun or, or integrate it to what I'm doing? Like I see kids who, you know, they're like, oh, well, I want to add sensors to my room so I'll know when my little brother comes in. So they'll <laughs> get a Raspberry Pi and like a magnetic sensor and they'll sensor up their door and then they'll get an SMS saying somebody like walked into your room. So like instead of going out and buying like a off the shelf product that's really expensive, they can do it for like 20 or 30 bucks. Which I think 20 or 30 like, bucks, you yeah. can outfit your room so you get a text message if your brother comes in the Absolutely. room. Absolutely. And wouldn't you love that? I would absolutely love that. Okay. Especially when I was living and in my family's house with my sister and she would come in and look at my clothes. Uh huh. There you go. That would have been very useful. See, not only that, but you can put it in your office now. So, like, who's in your office right now while you're here? You can instrument your office to, like, send you a tweet or an SMS. So, I think it's neat. Like, all you can do on social media now, like, you know, you're seeing like Facebook and Twitter integrate with Internet of Things. So this is like the perfect time to get into it. You're doing all your manufacturing right here in New York. Yes, that's right. For people who are starting companies who might be told by venture capitalists, you can't do it here, don't even think about trying to manufacture what you're creating in this country. Mm -hmm. What do you say? There's always reasons to do one or the other. So I'm not going to say like never manufacture in the USA or never manufacture abroad. The smart way is to actually look at your situation and see which is a better match. For people who are in the early stages, actually manufacturing in-house can be very powerful because you have speed, which is very important. You have fast iteration. You can beta and alpha test. I sit you know, five feet from the pick and place machine, the machine that actually makes the electronics. I can think of a design, prototype it, and get it manufactured within two weeks. If you're going abroad, that's not possible. Like If you're, if you're manufacturing, say, in Shenzhen, you have to go there. This is like months and months and there's delays and like Chinese New Year happened, like now you lost six weeks. 
Whereas when you manufacture in-house, you can look at the yields, you can look at the design for manufacture, you're seeing what's going on, you really understand it. And then once you feel comfortable with the process and you feel like you have your, your test procedure really good and like you're at the final design, then you can think, all right, now I'm going to scale it. That's when you go to a factory to do that. You, you use a factory as your scaling um, manufacturing, not as your prototype. quick prototype analysis. Because I think when you're a startup, speed is so much more important. More important than money, especially if you do have VC. You already have this money. So you might as well like look into what you can do in-house just to get things going really, really fast. Because a, a mistake when you go to scale is very expensive. But scale when you're in your kitchen, it's like, okay, I'll just try again tomorrow. Lamore Freed, the first female engineer on the cover of Wired Magazine. It's so nice to meet you. Thank you.